Oh, you all done, pumpkin? Just started. You already done with your breakfast? That was fast. Nice to see you not run away from the camera for a change. That's nice, licking her lips at her wet food. Always gets her wet food in the morning. It's the gift to trick a cat into staying hydrated. What is that about? You're a living thing. Just drink water. It shouldn't have to trick you into being hydrated. He wants to go outside. He is so ready for me to get rolling and get outside and get to work. Oh, hey, what's up, garden friends? Jet forgot. Don't have the wide angle lens. It's in the shop. Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Things are moving. Things are going. Thank you everybody for your warm comments in the last video, last Saturday's video. Everything here is fine. Just, you know, adjustments, taking time. That's all. Toby, you want to say hi? Anything from Tobes? Tobes? Nothing? There we go. Good morning. Oh, that's quite the glow. No, his eyes do not look that green in person. I have a lot of stuff to dig up and chop this week. I think it's gonna be kind of fun. I don't know when the company is coming to get the palm trees. I have to get background here, don't I? Okay, if you're new here and you don't know, I have a lot of big plants, big palm trees. The big palm trees go off to a service here in St. Louis where they store them in a warehouse during the winter time. So like this one right here, this giant Alexander palm, it's gotta go. The Robolini, two of the queens, one of the, Okay, that one fell over. Fine, it happens. The Eureka, someday I'll probably have him take it, but not yet. The other queen and an Adenidia over here. I also have a big bird of paradise down the other side that I'm going to have them take as well. So this company, they pick up the palm trees, keep them until it's safe to bring them back. But the problem is they don't guarantee anything plants. Well, they don't really guarantee the palm trees anyways, but if they kill it, just out of good faith, they replace it. How end up with new palm trees in these planters every year. Since they don't take any of the stuff that's underneath, I mean, they'll take it, but they're just gonna rip all the stuff out. It makes it a lot harder to water the plants, right? I understand that, and it's more places for bugs and things to infest. So I have to come into the bases of these large plants and remove whatever I want to keep. So if there's something in the base of a pot, that I don't want to potentially die over the winter time because like I said, they're not trying to take care of what's underneath the plants. It's, the main thing is just to keep the palm trees going. Gotta dig up what I wanna keep and cut back what needs to go. They don't ask you to do this. I just do it on my own accord because I feel like if I come in and cut everything back, so if I were to cut these colocaceas back, the tropical storms or any of the, collad there's caladiums in here. They're just, they're really buried in there. If I cut them back on my own, they're less likely to be ripped out by them when they get them to the greenhouse before they move them inside. Rip them out, you might take the roots out and then you don't have a plant to come back next year. But if I go ahead and cut them back, one, that's one less thing for them to do. So I guess that's nice of me. And it's also more of a guarantee, not really a guarantee, but it increases the odds that maybe what I have planted will come back next year. Usually they do, the caladiums, the colocaceas, some of the gingers, those things usually come back when they bring the palm trees back in the springtime. So that's what's going on this week. Gonna clear out the pots. And at some point they're supposed to come and take the palm trees. I don't know when you just select the week of when you want them to come. So I need to give them a call and find out. I'll probably do that between clips here whenever I'm done filming this introductory part. I did want to update the hot pink Alpinia bloomed. Uh huh. Yep. See that? It's not even an Alpinia. And it still has its tag on it. So I can prove it that it says, uh, hopefully the camera will pick it up. Alpinia purpurata, hot pink. You see that? That's what I ordered. This is from Top Tropicals. This is a Hedichium. Not even close to being the right ginger. Not at all. Totally different plant. And I really should have noticed because this, this just looks like a Hedichium. This doesn't even look like an Alpinia. I just trusted them and I thought, okay, well this is probably the right plant, even though it didn't look like one. I'd never seen one of these hot pink purpuratas before, but I know what a purpurata looks like. Here's a dwarf purpurata over here. Very different plant. Yeah, doesn't look the same. This is an Alpinia purpurata, like dwarf red, semi-red, something like that. And then there's this guy over here. I know the banana leaves are blocking, but see? It's definitely not the same. The leaves are not quite as paddle-like. They tend to curve down instead of bowing, like a, like almost like a canoe. I guess that's how you could say it. See that, like a canoe, maybe. Hot dog bun, whatever. Slightly folded inward with the midrib vein of the leaf 
we're gonna get more technical with it. Whereas these have more of an alternating sporadic leaf that is semi curved at the ends. It doesn't, I don't smell anything. Oh no, it doesn't. It smells very nice, but it's still not what I ordered. I would have rather had this beautiful hot, hot pink flower. I don't, why, why did they do that? I've been waiting since, when did I order these? March? February? Something like that? I've been waiting for such a long time. And I was so excited for those great big hot pink blooms I've been talking about for the last couple weeks when the little flower and fluorescent spikes started to pop up and then it's just, it's just a hedichium. Nothing special yet, smells nice, but I don't, I don't wasted the pot space behind this queen palm for a hedichium. No way, I would have much rather put a heliconia back there, even that Thai rainbow canna. I think that would have been beautiful in this location, not just a freaking white butterfly ginger. It's a cool plant, but it's not what I wanted. The hot pink Alpinia purpurata is supposed to have a very long, I think it's like eight to 10 inch cone shaped flower on it. <laughs> That's hot pink. This is not even close, way off. Flowers on the dwarf Alpinias are pretty faded, but you get a better idea of the difference when you look at it. Yeah, a whole different vibe, top tropicals. Y'all messed up on that one. Uh, what's done is done. There's everybody's update on the hot pink shell ginger. I d turns out I don't have one. Good to know. I was thinking I was going to want to dig that ginger up and store it in the grow space this winter, but I'm, I'm not I'm not going to do all that for a, a white butterfly ginger. It's not one that I really desire to have around. It's a beautiful ginger. It does smell nice, but they take longer to get blooming than the cochineal, no, cochineal. Cockyanums, <laughs> that's how you say it, which are the flaming torches. That's one of those that I grow out here as a perennial. And they are very, very, very easy to grow. The sun's right in my eyes. I cannot see anything I'm filming. Hopefully you can see this. They're vigorous. They're hardy-ish. They usually survive the winters here. It's rare that I have one of these die off with the flaming torches. So why would I go to the trouble of overwintering one with the white flower that takes a few months longer to get blooming. It's just a plain old white flower. I know, yeah, it smells nice. And I bet if you had a huge clump that were in bloom at one time, it would smell great. And it, so if it survives the winter and comes back with the palm tree, that's awesome. Cool. I'll dig it up and throw it somewhere in the garden, but I'm not going to waste space in the grow space for it. And it's too late to try and find a spot in the garden. I'm not going to overwinter it outside. I've tried overwintering the coronariums, the white ones before, and it just never worked out. They'll come back, but they come back so small that they never have time to get big enough to bloom again. So it's just, no, it's gonna be audios for that one. Okay, well, this has been fun. I'm gonna give them a call and find out when they're coming so that I can gauge what I need to do and when I need to do it. And we can start pulling annuals out from around the plants and then say goodbye to the palm trees. I'm not that sad about it. It's just that time of year. I'm gonna be happy that they're gone and to the greenhouse and I don't have to worry about frost or anything hurting them anymore. And no, the pool's not done yet. Hopefully they'll be here sometime this week. I have no idea. I'm thinking I should probably run to the hardware store <laughs> and grab some tarps maybe because the tarps that I've been using for landscaping projects, like what small tarps, just like a little, the smallest tarp I can find. Those, uh, I got like really distracted because there's no pool to filter out the sound of them talking up there and it's like messing with my brain because the way the sound bounces from them talking it like comes off from over here and it sounds like there's somebody at my gate who wants to come talk to me but that's not the case i'm pretty sure it's just thought it was people up there but he's barking like there's somebody here in my backyard i don't know what's happening right now well it confused him too he thought there was somebody back here too but it's not they're up there anyways what was i saying tarps let's grab a couple cheap tarps something to throw this stuff down onto the tarps that i've been using tarpa that I'd been using. I had like a 10 foot tarp. It, it disintegrated. I'd had it for a few years and there's like nothing left of it. It was a cheap one. So let's go grab another one. Never mind. Found a tarp. Wow. That is, that's zoomed way in there. And I had a little side quest. <laughs> really harsh side eye there, Punkin. Got the call. The lens is fixed. I'm so excited. I have hated using this lens that I'm using right now. Look at this thing. They gave it a nice big cleaning. I don't remember what they said was wrong with it. They replaced the second block assembly, put it back to manufacturer specs and did a general cleaning. Got it looking nice. Look at this, like this lens. It can't even focus on it. It's just too beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna swap these out. There we go. Oh, that's better. Look at that focus. It's focusing. 
I don't know if y'all remember. Look, I can move the camera around and things are staying in focus. Turbo, you want to come over here and see if you focus? You're not going to, okay. He's not interested. That's fine. The issue I was having with this was that it just, it wouldn't focus. Dealt with it for a few weeks. And really when I look back on it, the problem started months ago. This lens just didn't want to adjust or focus in on anything, but now it's fixed. And it's nice and wide, has better stability built into it so it's, things aren't quite as shaky. It's more stable, colors come out more real to life and everything just looks good. I know it says that they did a cleaning, but I think I'm seeing some spots here. Y'all seeing some spots on here? Maybe I'm gonna wipe this down and go outside and get back to work. There we go. Crisp and clean, I hope, unless those spots are on the inside of the sensor. I don't see them now, so that should be, do you see how quickly that focused? That's what I like, like to see that. Been a long time. This is good news for all of us because when I fight with this lens, I usually leave it in the videos. So it's gonna be less fighting for y'all to have to bear through. What's wrong, why are you like this? Wanna go outdoors? Play with the plant, no? What's going on? They've been mopey, they miss their friend. It's understandable, it's just the way things go. Things will pick up, they'll get used to it. Well, let's go play, come on, turbo, turbo. There we go, there we go, he's alive. Toby, do you wanna come out? But say, no, I figured not. Are you sure, Toby? Come on, it's a beautiful day. You come outside and play. No, that's fine. Oh, I know. welcome to the ADD part of the video. Look at this. Look at it, finally have a dining room table. Isn't it beautiful? That was an odd spot to zoom in on to talk about the table being beautiful. This is from the 1960s, may have been built in the late 1950s, pardon the echo, in a big, open room that's still being renovated here. Has a few scratches and imperfections that are gonna be filled in and fixed up. There's some restoration to do. The top is a burl wood, I think is what they said. All these little squares in here from the knots in the wood put together, laid in there beautifully. It has a leaf, two leaves right there. They're over there. The legs have a cherry-ish finish on the mahogany with a black outline. And I say the chairs, I meant the legs. The legs in the base, which is nice because the top of the table kind of goes with the floor and the rest of the table goes with the rest of the cherry that's spread around the house. The chairs are, well, they're old chairs. They're in pretty good shape. Probably going to recover the tops of those, but uh, other, what, did that startle you? I'm so sorry. I wasn't trying to scare you. My bad, Turbo. Isn't it fun how the legs bow out? I know, there's someone at the door. I get it, there's a package. I know, with the barking, oh my goodness. So the table <laughs> belonged to Attorney General John Mitchell. <laughs> Turbo, you're gonna have to stop. We're, we're not doing that right now. Have a seat. Hey, 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 hey. Have a seat. Eat, good boy. It's in the middle of telling the story of the table. Belonged to Attorney General John Mitchell during the 60s uh, from, it's from the, during the Watergate scandal. That has nothing to do with why I wanted the table. I think that would be a weird reason to want the table. It's just, it was a beautiful set. Solid wood and the china cabinet, which is beautiful. It's a gorgeous china cabinet that hasn't been delivered yet. That's still sitting around waiting to be picked up. Need a lot of muscle power for the china cabinet because it doesn't come apart. It's very heavy. But I should say, despite being from that era and the history that was around it. It's a pretty cool table. Got a nice classic look to it. It's in great shape. There's hardly any scratches or dents on it. I'm not crazy about the chairs, but it's a set. Looking at dining room tables for ones that will seat eight to like 12 people with a leaf in them, I was looking at like five to six grand. Some of them are like 10 or 12 for some of these different sets. Once you factor in all the chairs and want something with a leaf and want something that's solid wood. Endless wasteful. Always good to be getting things that have been refurbished or something previously owned as opposed to buying new. And that's uh, my preference for wooden furniture because it just seems like everything's made to be garbage these days. So that classic furniture and it should last a long time, hopefully. Okay, back to gardening things. So hope you enjoyed that ADD moment. Okay, get started with this Edenidia palm. It's so quiet out here. I don't like it this quiet. At least have a little bit of noise coming from the fountain over there. Always takes me a minute to get in far enough to really be able to find the actual bases of the plant so I can make nice big cuts, get things cleaned out more quickly. I feel like every year when I do this, I have people commenting about how sad it is. And 
I agree for the most part. Maybe it's just because I've been doing this for so long, but I don't mind it. I'm not going to say I necessarily enjoy this part of what I have to do out here, but it opens things back up. And it's nice to be able to have that fresh look again at the palm tree without all the annuals in them. Because at this point, this time of the year, the annuals have gotten pretty spindly and sad looking. There just isn't much to hold on to. <laughs> I completely forgot that I had Persian shields planted in the back of these planters. <laughs> look at the size of these things. They're freaking huge. Okay, that's good for that one. I'm gonna go ahead and get this pulled out. Let it dry out. Uh, that's nice. Cleaned up pretty well. This is what I'm talking about. You get a better look at the palm trees when they're pulled out and have a moment to appreciate them. Not surrounded by annuals that are three to four feet tall and the plants are surrounded by other plants. I should stand back and just look at them on their own. This one did great this year. It's a beautiful adenidia. Okay, I think the queen is next. I'm really not all that concerned about digging up anything from this container, especially now that I know that the ginger isn't a ginger that I even care about keeping. None of that really matters. Not really caring about what happens with those things. I also have a little bulblet crystallinum in here. It's recovering, looking better than it did a few weeks ago. As far as Musa Florida goes, it's in here. It doesn't really have much as far as variegation goes. It's been a pretty pathetic looking one. That's why I experimented with it in this pot to begin with. So I'm thinking with this one, I'm just gonna <laughs> cut it out. Clippers aren't quite big enough, but it's a banana. You can just come in and do some of that. And who knows, it may end up offsetting and putting up some pups. It's a banana, they're pretty tough. So it may end up coming back next year. I don't know. Come in, cut out all of the verbena that's looking pretty scraggly. I had forgotten there's an Alocasia Jacqueline down in there. I should probably dig that out. Surrounded by curcuma bulbs. It hasn't done much, but it was just a pathetic little bulb. I think one tiny growth on it when I put it in here. So I'd say that that's a decent amount of recovery. I might be able to get in there, get underneath it, and just pluck it out very gently by the root mass that's tangled in there with the bananas. I think that's okay. I still see the roots on there. I'm gonna wanna pop that up pretty quickly. Remember the tea party, Colocasia? It's sunny, I cannot see my viewfinder at all. I don't know if you can see it, but it looks good. Very pretty. Okay, and I'm not going to uh, pull out the knot alpinia. This, I'm just cutting it down. If it survives the winter and comes back next year, great. If not, that's fine too. I don't really care. With these, I'm gonna take them inside and put them in a vase. May as well get to enjoy them inside for a little while. Only two of them were even in bloom, so not like there's a lot to take in. I could probably maybe try and take some of the other ones inside and see if they'll start. They're not going to bloom. Never mind. That was stupid. I was saying I just said it was stupid and I'm still going to talk about it. I was saying I could take some of the ones that haven't opened all the way and put them in the vase and see what they're going to do. But it's very unlikely that they're going to do anything because they're so slow to get going in general. But I guess, I mean, I can just, we can see. Okay, so queen palm is done. Now I need to do, shoot, I just realized it's not done. I have to go get a ladder and get that thing down. Yeah. Nah, I didn't bring y'all along for it. You didn't miss anything very exciting. It was technical and took a minute because this had rooted into the trunk of the palm tree. But once I figured that out, I just gave it a little peel and it came right off. Looking naked now. That is something I will definitely be repeating next year. Did I turn the camera? Yeah, camera's on. Okay, good. A lot of multitasking going on out here. Wouldn't surprise me if I had forgotten to turn the camera on. Can just pull this out. That'd be so much faster. Yeah, here we go. Tropical rose, sun and pa- I was wondering where that went. Okay, good to know, was looking for that. Okay, now that's looking naked, but nice to be able to see the entire plant again. If, you, if I pulled back further. Looks nice, lots of trunk. Yeah, it looks nice. I also pulled out a queen. Just one of them. The other one's over there, I'm gonna wait until they get here. 
to handle that because it's, well, it's held in place by sandbags. If I pull it out, it's just gonna fall over. That means the Adenidia is next. There's not really a great angle to get in here and film and be able to do this. So I don't know, what am I gonna do here? Pulled the lime zingers, put them in a bucket, didn't get much of the corn, so I don't know what's gonna happen. Get them potted up, cut them all the way back. Hopefully they survive. And then I, uh, I've been trying to get this out. Oh, and I did leave one piece of the lime zinger at multiplied, so I thought, well, okay, I'll leave one of those in there. Maybe it'll overwinter and come back next year. If not, it's okay. <laughs> and, uh, the problem is I have this Chinese fan palm right in front of this, and I don't want to tear the Chinese fan palm out because my plan for this in the winter was to cut it back, mulch it, and if it comes back, great. If not, then oh well. It's done a good amount of growing there, though, and it's looking good. I don't want to tear, I don't think there's a way to get this out without tearing up that fan palms may just have to do it. Also, not hating this. It looks dumb because there's no curve to the trunk, but maybe someday, right? Maybe something with a curved trunk should go right here. That would look pretty freaking cool. I got it. It's out. This thing's done some growing. It still has old fronds from the springtime. I never pruned out of there. I didn't see them there, tucked up against the house. I love that palm tree. It's so good looking now. <laughs> hey, Turbo. I'm gonna have to move you, baby. Need to get the Gassia palms taken care of. There's a lawn company in the background, so pardon the noise. Always something in the background. I think these Royos really did their thing. Those look nice, don't they? They look really good. Had that Heliconian the way it was blocking them. This filled out very, very nicely. These Vinca, by the way, they really did great in these containers. I will definitely be using the trailing vincas again next year. And the blueberry catharanthus, I don't remember what they're called. I think it was something blueberry. Oh no, I just did that get on camera turbo. I'm so sorry, baby, you're all sandy now. <laughs> Looks like you just had a fun day on the beach tearing up some plants. You okay, baby? Turbo, you okay? You, you all right? Yeah, you don't mind. You're a good boy, I'm sorry, turbo. Maybe you should move. Come on, Turbo, get up. Get up, go on, get out of there. Just gonna get more sand on you. Okay, what I was about to say was I like the Catharanthus so much, the little blueberry one that I was thinking, I'd try and lift it out, maybe pot it up, see how it does inside this winter. But then, you know, avalanche of sand went everywhere. Oh, the pink. Should I try and take one of the pink ones inside too? Can I just pull this out? I bet I can. It'll be a little messy, but it should just lift out. There we go. That's a heck of a lot faster than trying to cut each one of those other individually. May as well grab one of the pinks too, right? I think I'll take one. Yo, just realized something that's pretty nice about having the liner in here not being done yet, the pool not being full, is I don't really have to be that careful. I mean, I'm still being careful and trying to get things on the tarp, but it, every other year I've done this, I have to be so cautious to not get dirt and junk in the pool because it's a lot harder to clean it out of there than it is off the patio. But this, right now, it, it doesn't matter. Nope, doesn't matter at all. Next question is, do I try and hold on to the Roeas? I can. I can just buy a new one next year for four bucks and it'll fill out and do the exact same thing. I won't have to take care of it all winter, but it's fairly easy to dig these up. Lifts right out, so may as well pull it out. Give it a chance, right? Last bits of these out. There we go. And the seashells. There's just so much stuff in here because I had these planted up with that beach theme. And then as far as actually getting these out of these containers, I might leave that up to them. Or I'll just work on that when they get here. Okay, I'm gonna do the next one. And then all that's left is the Alexander Palm. About half an hour ago, I released the video on the Gossia Palms. Should I have waited to film that? You can see the trunks so much better now. The Vinca, they're not very tall, but they just, they stand out more without the flowers. It doesn't matter. What's done is done. They're all cleaned up, ready to go. I mean, kind of, they need to come out of their containers, but that'll happen tomorrow. It's my tri tripod's a little wonky. Okay, and the Alexander Palm. There's, it looks like there's more there than there actually is. If anything, I want to take a nice last look at those Pharaoh's masks. They filled out. They're looking really good. I love how those came out this year. Otherwise, everything that's in there, it's just impatience. So I will come in, cut back the Pharaoh's masks and the rest of the stuff can stay. Done. And uh, actually I pull up one of the Pharaoh's masks. It has a nice little tuber on it. And that's kind of cool because it takes these a few years to develop a tuber. I'm gonna try and just store that dormant and see what happens with it. Okay, and that's it. Thought about grabbing the ladder and trying to get those seeds down, but 
I don't care enough, and I'm not going to try and germinate them, so it doesn't matter. I'm sure a bunch will fall when they take it tomorrow, and I can pick up whatever falls down. I had told them they were picking up 12 plants. I've only pulled out 10, so that had me wondering if, did I, was I thinking of having them take these out of Nidia Palms? Eh, uh, I, mean, I guess it could. I'd like to have a look at the inside and see if they've even done enough growing to justify them taking these. Yeah. Kind of. Mm, yeah, those are in there. Those aren't coming out easily, so I, no, they'll just take the tent. Not in cash pots. They should have been, but I didn't have any containers that I thought were quite large enough to do that with. But I do now because I need something to move these into in the wintertime. I don't think I'm going to take these giant blue planters inside. So I'll need to move those into something else, but I don't have to worry about that yet. Been a really fun year with them. Got to see a lot of nice growth. Lots of seeds. Fun underplantings. It'll still look beautiful when they're gone. There's still plenty of nice plants out here. Quick phone update. Yes, breathing heavily. I decided to go ahead and pull the double-trunked Edenidias out from the Miami planters. As you can see, that's it. I don't need to explain anything else. Uh, I figured I had already told them to take them and just forgotten about it. I'd mentioned in the garden tours that I was going <laughs> to keep them inside, but... Uh, I've already said they were going to take them, they already made space for them, so may as well. I threw them into some extra containers I had laying around, had to add a little bit extra soil to them. It's going to make it more difficult to get them back to the Miami planters next year. It's nothing that our root saw won't take care of, and I think they're looking pretty good. Get a nice look at them. Mosquito just flew right into my eyeball. Eyelash territory. No, it might actually, there might be a mosquito in my contact lens. Had a lot of growth on the trunks, but that's because these are still at a size where they're going to put up a lot of leaves first, and then when they reach a certain height, all these old leaf bases will start to sh basically die off. So I would imagine uh, probably when these come back in the spring should have rings up to right about here, I'm guessing, as long as they keep growing the way they should, have nice fresh soil around the roots, and uh, hopefully they'll do okay. I left the cordelins and the pots with them just because, you know, why not? They're an easy plant to overwinter. I think they'll have a better chance at survival than the Adenidias will. Although they should have pretty good shots since they're in a container that has fresh soil right around the roots. The bugs are flying right into my eyes right now. And the other reason that I went ahead and got those pulled and potted up to go was because I remembered I'm going to want to do winter planters in here, right? And as long as those Adenidias are in there, I'm not going to get that done. That was another good reason to go ahead and get those big blue containers emptied out so I can throw some arbs or something evergreen in them. The nurseries won't really have plants around by the time I would move these in. The way it's looking right now, it's probably going to be late October, early November. But yeah, that's good. That's done. Oh, and I got the Gossia palms pulled out from the big blue pool planters too, if you want to have a look at those. See what they look like. Never showed the new containers. There's not much to see. Just some heavy duty plastic pots and those really cool trunks. Love those trunks. Really neat, fun looking trunks on these. And uh, yeah, okay, so uh, I'll probably just cut back to when the palm trees are gone or as they're taking them away. Or maybe not, because they said they're coming on the 12th, which is tomorrow, but I had to remind them of the crane. Remember last year, they didn't bring the crane and that turned out to be a huge problem. And he said that they would arrange for the crane, but it might delay things, push things off by a day or two, so. They may not even be coming until Monday or Tuesday next week. I have no idea, but they said the 12th, so things are ready to go for the 12th. We'll just have to sit back, wait, and see what happens. Maybe the pool company will show up at some point, too, and finish off the liner. That'd be nice. They can do it now. Got all the dirty stuff handled. I might give them a call in the morning and just see what's going on with all that. What is it? It's a caladium of some sort. Maybe a frog in a blender? I don't... I don't remember putting this there. It's the next day. Palm trees are all lined up, ready to go. Just waiting on the crane and, and that's it. Say bye-bye, palm trees. This one has a rounded bottom. It's one that was being held by sandbags. So they're going to toss them to a 30-gallon container when they get back to the greenhouse for me. Look at it. It's backlit, but you can see lots of nice growth. Things have gotten big. They're looking good. I probably shouldn't have walked this far away from everything because we can't even really get to appreciate them when they're like this. Just a final look. I know I've said that multiple times, but here we go. Another final look. I figured that it was going to be a bunch of chaos when they came in here to take them away, but it's not. They're hanging out waiting for the crane, so have some free time. This is pretty much the end of it. Need to cut the inflorescence 
off of there. I'm going to let them do it when they get it laid down onto the truck. Because those really do pull out of energy from the <laughs> crown. So may as well get them off of there, right? And Anidia is ready to go out on the Bird of Paradise, which I like never showed this year. Here it is. <laughs> really never saw it. It was tucked back there by that coach light. It's good. Did a lot of growing. It's more filling out than growing. Getting very tall. Probably should have kept the camera on there while I was talking about whatever. There's been a lot going on this morning. Say goodbye. This is it. This is fun. I like walking around here. It's like I'm in my little palm tree jungle. Hmm, you know what? This smells amazing. I am so glad that I brought these inside. It's a bit much though. Last night, could smell this all the way up there. All the way upstairs, this is, is kind of strong. Definitely, I was nauseated from the smell. It's more pleasant during the daytime, so that's a win. It's like a gardenia times 10. Do you want to go outdoors? I'm going outdoors, but you're sitting in front of the door. So sad and mopey. I know, Turbo. I know. It's gloomy. There's no pool. Your kitty friend's dead. I get it. He'll be okay. He's still adjusting. So, there it is. All gone. Bye-bye, palm trees. Makes things look a little different out here. Don't have the big Ed and Nydia there and the giant Alexander over there. And I can actually see the side of my house now, which is bizarre, and I don't like it. But otherwise... Still think it looks pretty good out here. Plenty of color, everything's nice. Now, last year when they took the palms, it was right when we had a really bad freeze. So the palm trees left and most of the annuals got killed off at the same time. So all the color went away. That's not the case this year. There's not even any frost in the next 10 days of the forecast, at least not that I've seen that can change at any point, but still got at least a week and a half of niceness out here. Let me getting these planted up with some evergreens. I tossed an arb. And one of the Miami planters down there. I don't know why. I only have one. I'm not just going to put one over there. And then have fall shrubbery to get into the ground now that things are cooling off, but the ground's still nice and warm. Great time to get things planted up. I have some ewes that have been sitting back there for a couple months, hanging out in the shade, waiting for things to cool off so they can start planting up some hedges back there, some more evergreen planters, and just make it nice. Make things look good for the next half of the year where everything else out here is going to be dead and ugly. Gonna need to get some color out here. It's green. It's not really a lot of color, just gonna be green. Yeah, we'll figure all that out. Thanks for hanging out. Hope you enjoyed the chaos of getting the palm trees ready to go. Getting some better shots of the palm trees when they're out on their own, not put together in the planters with all the flowers around them and everything. Sometimes it's nice to be able to sit back and just like look at just the plants without all the stuff around them. Love all the stuff around them, but it's nice to be able to see them. Still got gingers blooming. That's exciting. Where did this, I didn't, did I plant this here? I have no recollection of putting a ginger right here. A long time ago, had a ginger here that never bloomed. And I think that that was a coronorium. It's one of those, those white ones in the kitchen with the heavily fragranced ones. They just never got going early enough in the year to have enough time to bloom. 
we'd always have a frosted cone back. That's not a coronarium. That's almost definitely a flaming torch because I see the orange or the yellow. At one point, I may have planted a kahili in here. I don't know. I'll keep y'all updated next week with what happens with that. It's probably just a flaming torch, though. All right. Comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to everybody. Hope things are going well for you in your gardens. Fall gardening can always be a lot of fun. Planters, decorations, weather. I'm kind of, I'm liking the weather. I prefer the heat, but this has been nice. The gingers have been blooming and not dying within two days because of the extreme heat. And probably about a week or more out of each one of those spikes. That's nice. Very different from the summertime. I hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day, great life, and everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.